Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Seasons. In the last part we got here to the Unicorn's Cave and now we're gonna complete this place. Uh, now you might recognize these Iron Mask enemies from not only Minish Cap but like in, uh, but ages as well. However, now that we have the magnetic gloves, we can now take their masks right off of them. Now this is a kind of tricky room. If you didn't talk to that owl statue in the previous room, you wouldn't know what to do here. What you have to do is kill these statues in any order you wish. I generally go like this because it's easy to remember. Why do you have to remember it? Well, because after defeating them, four chests appear and you have to open them in the order you defeated them. So I went top right, bottom right, bottom left, top left, and you get a one rupee, ten bombs, two ember seeds, and a small key. That took me a while to realize my first playthrough, needless to say, but oh well. That is, in the rare occasion I got to this place as a kid without a, a guide. You know, I do have to wonder, for official strategy guides for the Oracle games, did they just combine them into one guide, or... Hmm. As long as it wasn't a Prima guide, though I honestly never had many problems with those, at least the Ocarina of Time one I got to use as a kid thanks to my brother. Though I've heard bad things about the Majora's Mask one. Oh boy. One misplaced Song of Time and misspelling GOAT so many times. Oh boy. Anyway, this is a pretty interesting room. Uh, all the floor is moving. Uh, if you have the quicksang, quicksang, quicksand ring from any place in the games, uh, you can walk on this stuff like it was a normal tile, but I have to do it the hard way. And for doing that, we get the compass, which is kind of pointless at this point because we're fairly late in. Now, this is actually an area you could have come to very early on in the dungeon, because we're only one screen left of the entrance right now. But we couldn't do anything over here because we didn't have the magnetic gloves yet. Have it on north and you'll be pulled towards these southern... studs? Poles? What are those? <laughs> Either way, you've easily seen them throughout the game, especially in Subrosia, where they are everywhere. And for doing that, we get a small key. I think this dungeon might have uh, one of the largest amounts of small keys you can have at any point in the Oracle games. Because at any, because at one point you're going to have four. Mind you, that's not the most you'll have in any given Zelda game at any point in time. I think that belongs to the key dungeon in Link's Awakening. I think you can have like seven at that point. Actually, no, wait, no, there's only one normal chest left and it's on this next screen. Take a guess as to what it is. If you guessed boss key, you would be wrong. We still have a bit to go before we can get that. Also, that little southern uh, magnet rotator thing is rather self-explanatory. Uh, the only part that can be troublesome is switching from north to south really quickly. You just have to mash the button, but uh, that could take some practice, admittedly. Anyway, now I'm back in this room from last part, just for editing's sake. Because uh, that was like a two-minute backtrack. Now, I could head west, or we could go and get what I just actually realized is the last treasure chest. Never mind, I was being stupid earlier. This is the last treasure chest. Which is still a small key. So where's the boss key? Don't worry, we'll find it. We'll find it. I think I mentioned it last part, but I really love the music in this place. Anyway, time for the mini-boss. Siger! Mi mixture of Scythe and Tiger, or Saber and Tiger, I guess. He is one of the harder mini-bosses, actually. Uh, not for me, mostly because I have the blue ring and his damage is halved, but otherwise he does a crap load of damage. Uh, you can only hit him on that little red ball on his tail. I recommend the Begoron Sword for this fight because you can take out him out in like four strikes, four or five strikes. It's getting those strikes in that's the pain in the ass part. He only has two attacks, which are either to go directly for you or to circle around like this, but even then, he can still be pretty unpredictable. Although I just realized I could have also used the Bigoron Sword in the boss. Huh. Well, I was being stupid then, during the recording. My only really big downside with the Bigoron Sword is that it's two-handed, and you have to re-equip both items. 
They could have headed left on that. Could have headed left on that previous screen, but we want to go to the right here first, because uh, this is where you're required to go first. Mind you, I think if you're brave enough, you can man man your way through the next area without doing this entire section of rooms. Anyway, these enemies here are magnites, I believe. The way they work is that they'll rotate around between north and south polarities of, mag of magnetism. And you can pull them towards you or repel them away from you using your respective, uh, things. They are annoying purely for the fact that they move fast. Anyway, here's the part that you can technically make this entire part of the area optional. You can move the northern, uh, orb there to get in the way of that fire. We're gonna need that more later on, but yeah. I think you can brave your way through those fires, though. You might take a lot of damage in the process, but it's probably doable. Also, fun little fact, dark nuts get attracted to you as well. <laughs> Anything that's metal will, actually. Inf is an enemy. Also, if you can't tell, I like tapping my buttons to the music. And here's that northern orb we put down here back in the first part of this dungeon. Uh, if you didn't put that there, you would have had to backtrack all the way around. Anyway, just hold this block in front of you, you can be protected from the fire. And now we're in this 2D area, which is... I think a uniqueness in the series. Well, first off, it, I think it's... well, not in the series, uh... in the game, more accurately. I think it's also the only area that these conveyor belts appear in, but I might be wrong about that. But it's unique because this is one of the only times we find the boss key outside in the open without any treasure chest or water blocking it. And I decided to cut to back to this area because time saving. And then I fall on spikes. Or just barely not. Oh boy. That was close. Admittedly, while the 2D sections are one of the more har uh, more harder, more challenging parts of the game, uh, they are still rather simplistic. Anyway, time for the boss, who is yet again from Zelda 1. Dig Dogger! However, we don't have a magical whistle to destroy him this time, we instead have an awesome chain ball! The way this boss works is that you- the- well, first off, the chain ball is southern polarity, so you need to push it with you with southern or pull it towards you with northern. You need to hit him with it four times, and upon doing the fourth hit, he'll split up into mini dig doggers right out of Zelda 1 as well. Uh, I recommend using the big Goron Sword for this, because they take three Noble Sword strikes in order to bring down. You can also use the Chain Ball, but you have to be really brave to do that. Also, the Chain Ball can hurt you, so watch out for that. However, this fight takes a while to complete, so after I did the first round of doing that, I just edited past the second one. And that's the Heart Container. And here's the Essence! You got the nurturing warmth, an essence of nature. Balmy days build strong saplings with their nurturing warmth. These are really weird essences. Then again, they were in this and ages, so I shouldn't really be complaining now, should I? Alrighty, hello there, Maker Tree, stalking me as usual. We've seen you twice in two videos now. Nurturing warmth has brought me strength. I saw a dream of Link inside vast ruins. Perhaps an essence is hidden in some. Alrighty, what the? Oh god! <laughs> Despair, Link. Your struggles are fruitless. Decay season, steal the fruit of the ravaged lands of Holodrum. Raise the earth. Oh, 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 oh. oh crap, yeah, we kind of forgot about these two. Oh, 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 oh. The lands rot and the flame of destruction burns. The flames of sorrow and destruction are lit. Now only the flame of despair remains. <laughs> Our sacrifice will revive the evil king and guide him to the light of the f three flames. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, that's not good. We kind of forgot about them entirely, didn't we? <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> anyway, let's continue on, and my inventory's in the wrong order, no! 
let's head up here for the gacha seed. And, oh, hi, Maple. I already got what I needed from you, so I don't really need to talk to you anymore. The one thing I do want to kind of point out, if you recall correctly, at one point in season, uh, ages, she got a vacuum cleaner. She'll always have the vacuum cleaner in whatever game you play first. However, in the game you play second... First off, I got a ring. She has a freaking UFO. <laughs> I don't know where she got that, or why she's using it, but it's awesome. Anyway, now we're back in this area of Sabroja because, well, there's some optional stuff we can do around here that I want to do. First off, you can see that treasure chest right there. That is my goal. Uh, you can't do this until you get the magnetic gloves, I believe. I think you might be able to trick it out if you know how to do the perfect pixel, or pixel perfect jump, but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, possibly. I've never seen anyone jump four. I've just seen three block jumps, but not four. Anyway, we got the blue ore. And now I'm back on this screen. Now, I know we've been here in the past, uh, particularly when we were going for Autumn. So, yeah, now we can go over here into this little mini cave. Which has house music for some reason. And get the red ore. And I edited it out of that place. Now that we have that, you might recall correctly when we got Autumn. There were these three guys who used the bomb flower in order to get some minerals, essentially, and open the way for us as well. They could do stuff with that blue and red ore, so let's head into their shop right here. Or, not really shop, it's more of a smithy. Or at least ore melting. They can melt those two together to make hard ore, and we get the return of a certain song. Though it's also giving me pretty bad flashbacks to the first playthrough run, or my first playthrough of this game when I failed at this, at this abrosion dance mini game for about an hour. <laughs> Yeah, I sucked as a kid. Then again, I'm pretty sure everyone sucked at games as a kid. Anyway, if we're doing that, we get the hard ore, which is for some reason green, although red and blue ore should melt together to make something purple. Then again, that's just my color wheel speaking. And now I'm back over here in Sabroja because the, the place we can use the hard ore is in this general direction, namely in this house. Welcome to the actual smithy. They only take on jobs that interest us, and once you know, we have rare hard ore, so yeah. They're gonna make, upgrade our shield for it, so let's have them do whatever. Whatever. Oh, what game was that from? Was that Overblood, or was that Overblood 2? I can't recall. I know it was some really bad old game. But for doing that, we get the Iron Shield. Kind of a late time for this upgrade, but okay. Well, actually, no, I think we still got it earlier here than we did in the entirety of uh, Ages. Anyway, before we end this off, I'm back toward the first dungeon because you may have actually seen it by this point, but there's this screen right here. You cannot do what I'm about to do until you have the essence from Unicorn's Cave. And here we got this guy who gives us the round jewel, which is the fourth of the jewels that we need to get into the next area. But with that, I'm going to need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and in part 13, we'll be heading on to Tarm Ruins. See you guys then.